and I'll start with uh, Nancy. Um, could you, can you, you're present. She's uh, muted. Okay. And uh, Ellen. Present. Jim. Oh, Jim's also muted. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, Bill uh, present. And then we also have uh, with us uh, Susan Bates and Amy Foley and our town manager, Stephen Crane. So welcome everybody. Uh, <laughs> what a day to have a nice <laughs> meeting uh, for sure. So the, uh, the minutes and uh, the agenda was uh, have been distributed. And so the first item of business is the approval of the minutes of January 26th, 2021. Are there any suggested modifications, amendments? Yes, Amy? Well, I'm just gonna say that I noticed in both sets of uh, minutes that um, there was a few typos along the way. Um, I apologize, probably in trying to get it out, that might've been me making a few edits, but um, in any case, I would uh, suggest that maybe the board allow me to correct, yes. correct typos along the way as part of the motion. Okay. So we have, um, we then have two parts. One is that we approve the minutes of January 26th, but we permit um, Amy to make whatever uh, corrections to typos that, um, that she, uh, that, that might be in the minutes. So I need a, need a motion in order to accept mm -hmm. the minutes of January 26th. I, 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 I move to accept the minutes of January 26th, 2021 and the minutes of February 10th, 2021, um, um, pending Amy's approval of typos. Okay. And I assume we can do both, can both of these approvals in, in one time, is that? Is that? I don't think so. Oh, no. okay. All right. All right. I'll second. If it's okay to do both at the same time, I'll 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 second the no motion. Okay. And I just want to double check with Amy that we can, in fact, do approval of both minutes at the same time. I think if it's clear in the motion which ones you're doing, I don't see a reason why you couldn't. I think that's okay. Fine. So the motion on the floor is that we approve the minutes of January twenty sixth. 2021 and February 10th, 2021, with Amy having the ability to do whatever minor edits uh, and uh, wordsmithing that are that are typos in the minutes. So uh, all in favor, I'll, I'll call on Ellen first. Okay, that's a- Yes, I, yay. Yes, okay. Nancy? Yes. And then Jim? Hi. Yes. And then Bill, yes. So we have, um, we're moving on to the item dealing with the miscellaneous mm -hmm. compensation schedule amendments. Um, and I'll turn this over to Amy to uh, pr make the presentation. Okay, sorry, just give me one second. Do you wish to have the packet up while I'm doing it for any reason, are you all set? Is everybody good? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, right. we're good. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so the first request, sorry, um, is to add a, an aquatics director title to the swim and fitness managerial schedule. So um, as you may recall, we have on the, um, the class and comp plan, a range for swim fitness specialists. And that is a very wide range. And then within that, we adopt the miscellaneous comp schedule ranges for those at the BD Center, which have um, you know, kind of some unique properties about them in, in terms of uh, budgeting and the type of work and all of that. So they've been on the miscellaneous comp schedule. Um, and in this case, the aquatics director uh, addition would be uh, adding a um, modified position from what was on in the past. So we've had somebody doing some aquatics uh, responsibilities, many of the ones that are an aquatics director, they, uh, those responsibilities were part of the, one of the BD program manager um, 
positions listed on the miscellaneous comp schedule, but that position is now vacant. Um, so that's one factor here. And then the other change recently is that the, with the departure of the recreation director, um, we, we lost some of the skill sets of having some of the licenses that the rec director had related to um, aquatics. Not a traditional place for it to be either. That was just something that worked for, for a while. But with both of those gaps, um, combined with yet another factor, sorry, which is that the, uh, we now have White Pond. And so there is an outdoor waterfront to run as well as the indoor uh, pool at Beatty, which was really what we used to just have. The needs for aquatics programs has grown considerably. So this new aquatics director version of, of the position would also get involved in we got lots of programs. I think it could be boating and swim lessons and things like that um, in outside, as well as what has happened at the Beatty Center. And so we did go through, um, Kate Hodges and I went through and uh, based on the um, plans for this position, put together a, a classification rating. As, as you know, we have a consistent system that we use that scores positions based on common um, factors. And it came out in the same grade as what's listed on this same schedule as the uh, assistant to the uh, BD manager. And so that, um, that was seemed like the right place to put it in terms of equity. And then on top of that, um, you know, Kate looked at some of the salaries around from, from the recreation systems that she has available to her. And it um, seemed an appropriate placement there in terms of recruiting. And then, um, and then, you know, budget wise, you know, that particular range works well. Um, again, the, some of this position, and salary. This is not a general fund or fully general fund position. Most of this is coming out of program funds related to the BD Center and now the um, White Pond program. So the idea is for it to be generating its own revenue. Okay. To pay for its own salary. So. Any questions or comments um, in regards to the aquatic record? Um, I'm sorry, can you hear me? I like the fact that Amy has articulated both the equity for other town positions and also the wage relationships to other um, towns um, in, in terms of the, you know, compensation that, you know, you have to have, uh, offer to, you know, attract another person. So thank you, Amy. Really appreciate that. Um, yes, Nancy. Yeah, I just want to ask, I, I might have missed it. I know that the BD program manager is vacant. Is it going to be filled? And are they duplicate? No, it's not. So right, right now, no, mm -hmm. not in that same way. But when it was put on the schedule, it was designed to be a title that could be used in a few different ways. So not necessarily just for swim types of programs. It could be used for uh, fitness programs as well. So we would want to keep it there as it may be something used in the future. Okay. Amy, in terms of your, your strategy to fill the uh, aquatic director's position, what, what approach are you going to, how are you going to fill this job? Um, yeah, I, I, Kate Hodges is, is here, just so you know, she is the department head for um, recreation. And so she may wish to speak to that as well. She's been working with Stephanie, who is our um, person in the HR office that coordinates that. So um, my understanding is that Kate has many resources in the recreation world uh, of places that she can get ads out through, mem uh, through associations and um, uh, you know, listservs, things like that. Um, we also put positions on Indeed and post them on our, our uh, website and that starts getting quite a presence out in the, um, in the electronic world. Okay. I would ask Kate, if, if I might, um, what do you think is our um, Concord's, I know, 
What do you think, but what happens when Concord, like as a town, municipal town, is competing with uh, maybe private sector folks for the same jobs? I know, Kate, that you're pretty savvy with a lot of these things. Like, how do you think about that? I mean, I, I don't know as if I could speak to some of the more technical or engineering positions, but as far as other recreation departments and human services functions, I think um, we offer a, a, a very good wage and um, we are getting better and making progress on our benefits packages. Um, as far as aquatics related, I think the, the major competition for this type is folks who either work for um, counties, which are not necessarily prevalent here in Massachusetts, but certainly um, Rhode Island and Connecticut have, have county waterfront directors, and then um, also the YMCAs. And so um, we pay uh, better by at least 20% for the YMCAs. Um, the one thing that the YMCA does have is they have um, a pretty robust education program, and they have a, a very um, favorable uh, insurance. And so when you're looking at, you know, the total compensation package, I think that, you know, working in Concord is, um, is right up there, if not better. Um, although I, I admit that I'm probably biased since I too work here. Um, but the other thing that I thought was, was interesting um, and would be interesting to somebody is that there's a multitude of different um, uh, resources that someone could use. So you're, you're talking about taking somebody who I'm assuming is relatively active and really likes to, to work in the recreation field and saying, you have four pools that are open year round that are inside, and yet you have an, also have an outside pool and then you have a waterfront. And the variety of programming that you can do and the fact that our aquatics division is sort of in its infancy stages, I think is a really unique and exciting challenge. And, um, and I can say that we've received at least a dozen highly qualified persons that are interested um, in the position. And just in speaking with the recreation director and the BD Center general manager, you know, our problem per se is how are we gonna narrow those candidates down? And I would say that um, we haven't had that experience for aquatics personnel in the past, at least in the six years that I've been here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very encouraged by that. I think that people are seeing that, you know, you're, you're not just pigeonholed to working in, in one building, but that, you know, you really can kind of spread your wings and, and we're looking for growth and development. So I'd say like, I love it. I love what you're saying, Kate, but can we please um, maybe, um, um, I don't know, set this in terms of a, 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 a value prop for customers or for applicants for the BD Center and many other town, many of the other town government positions. I think that it's sometimes easy to think rather, it's, it's often easy to minimize the value of working in a town of Concord. Um, not sure I exactly understand. I, do you think we are minimizing the, the value of working in Concord? Uh, yeah. Or I'm, people don't understand that? Yeah, I'm, say, I'm saying that maybe sometimes people don't really quite understand the value of working in Concord. So if you could articulate that for new hires, that'd be great. Okay, we can. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Kate. Uh, any other questions or comments regarding the aquatic director? item on the agenda. All right, so with no other comments, um, I'll, you know, the chair will entertain a motion to add the title aquatic director to the swim and fitness managerial section. Um, do I have a motion? Um, Sorry, can I get off mute? I can, I, I can, I can do it. Um, I'll make a motion to add the title of product director uh, to the swim and fitness managerial section of the miscellaneous compensation schedule 7 2, the pay range of 53,582 to 72,109. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, I have a second from Nancy. Yeah. Um, we'll go around and uh, <clears throat> with the personnel board members. Ellen? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. 
And Bill, yes. All right, this brings us then to the second item uh, on the miscellaneous compensation schedule, dealing with the increase the of the maximum rate for assistant teacher slash assistant group leader. Amy, I'll let you make the presentation. This is a position in our child care programs that are again part of the recreation uh, divisions operations. Um, and in the past year, some of the, the child care programs that we've had have needed to be <clears throat> modified due the, to the pandemic. And some um, kind of new or modified versions of programs were set up, things like um, when the school schedules were, were changed and there was remote learning, recreation uh, put together some programs that assisted those that um, that weren't in school but still needed to do the, the learning. Um, some of those programs or that particular program is uh, moving over to, to underneath the school department. We are legally still one employer and we have been looking at the rates with the school department and comparing them to what we're going to do here. And so we had a, a range that was a little bit lower than what the the school department has been using for similar positions we or i'd say it was a wider range but um in any case the um in order to make sure that we are paying everyone equally consistently across the board we feel that the um, maximum of 1550 should increase to 17 dollars per hour for the assistant teacher slash assistant group leader position all right, thank you. Is there any uh, comments or questions? All right, so the chair will entertain a motion to uh, that will increase the maximum rate for the assistant teach uh, assistant teach assistant group leader pay range. Do I have someone who will move to? I move to um, increase the maximum range of the assist for the assistant teacher assistant group leader from $15.50 to $17 per hour. All right, do I have a second? A second. Okay, I have a second from Jim Richardson. Uh, all in favor, well, Ellen, yes, okay. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Yes, Jim? Yes. And Bill, yes. Cool. All right, um, I think that concludes the agenda item on miscellaneous compensation schedule amendments, which then moves us to the fourth item on the agenda, which is the warrant article for the 2021 annual town meeting. Um, I guess if I, if I try to understand where we're at, um, we're going to need to have move a motion for uh, as we look on the agenda, the ratification of classification actions. So Amy, is this, will this just require the personnel board to move to uh, ratify the classification actions or do we have to be more specific or less specific? So um, I don't think the board has actually moved to do that before. It, what this is, it, you've already taken the actions. Yes. And so now town meeting needs to ratify those. So this is really just you saying, yes, that's how, you know, that reflects what we need to show in the warrant. So I will be uh, submitting the warrant article on your behalf. I've drafted it as shown in the, um, in the packet. And it would just be, you know, you confirming that yes, uh, that reflects how you want to proceed with that. Let me just, cause I don't think I'm, I was clear enough. Okay. There really, as I looked at the agenda, we have the ratification of classification actions. That's a bullet. Classification and compensation plan amendments. And then we have the personnel bylaw amendment. Well, uh, um, on the agenda. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm getting confused by here. I think that um, the classification and compensation, the, the, the bylaw is very different from, uh, maybe I'm not getting what the well, overall item four is, but I think that we need to um, separate the um, class and, rather the article six 
from everything else. It, it, in my home. Right, they are. They are separated, um, so I, I, I think. So, yes. So I think that, um, you know, unless you see something in the ratification piece, that's the first section of this topic. So we've got warrant articles for 2021. The first warrant article that would be submitted on behalf of the personnel board is the ratification of the classification actions. Um, and so really, I'm just looking for you, and this can be a, a separate motion if you wanna just uh, well, confirm that, that, that you support that, that okay. you know, that we submit, the town manager and I submit those articles. Okay, I get it. I don't think that's the way it's written in the agenda. I get that, you know, it's about, um, we've got a bunch of like um, items that we're, you know, trying to like move forward, but I know I would really like article six to be separate. It, I think it is, yes. I think it is. Um, so right now we're, we're not to article six yet. Right now we're just on, on the ratification. And I, you know, in the past, I've I've submitted it on behalf of the board without a vote. It's just been an administrative. So just to clarify, it's cool. just taking what you've done for the past year, and and um, and going ahead and submitting that warrant article. So I, I don't know what the agenda just it doesn't seem clear to me. So if you can explain it to Amy, I would be so grateful. Okay, so under number four on the agenda, it says personnel board warrant articles for 2021 annual town meeting. Right. Okay. Um, and then there's three bullets. So the, we're on the first bullet underneath that. The first, the first uh, warrant article is about ratification of classification actions. Yeah. And that's a standard process that's in accordance with, with personnel bylaw. So um, right now, I think we're just touching base on that first Warren article, making sure that we all understand what the, the process is and that I'll be submitting the, um, the article on behalf of the board as, as I included uh, in the packet, a draft for that. So that's the first thing. Then, then separately, um, we can go on to the other two bullets. Next, we'd, we'll go on to the classification and comp plan amendments, which would be a separate Warren article, our standard Warren articles for the year. Mm -hmm. And then the personnel bylaw amendment, which we've been referring to as Article Six. I don't know what what article number will be assigned this year. Maybe we yeah. can put a plug in to get it assigned to six for simplicity. But we'll talk about that after we've addressed these other pieces. Cool. Okay. And uh, just for clarification, Amy, uh, the the first two bullets are things that we've already voted on. This is just putting them together and. and um, not the first two, just the first one. The first, first one. one are the ratification. So then we'll talk about a proposal for the coming year. Yeah. That we haven't talked about it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we we have, uh, I'll, and I'll re repeat just to make certain I've got, I'm in sync with everybody, is that uh, the first bullet is really, there's no need for any personnel board action because we've already done that. So the second bullet is essentially now, Amy, for you to make a presentation as to what is included in this classification and compensation plan amendment. Exactly. All right, okay. so I will let, unless there's any additional conversation as to the agenda bullets, again, the first one is, 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 has already essentially been been um, dealt with through previous personnel board meetings and uh, approvals. We'll move to the second bullet, which is classification and compensation plan amendments. Okay, Amy. Okay, so um, you know the the schedules for regular status positions uh, require approval by town meeting every year or any, when there's an amendment. And so we have historically, uh, the whole time that I've been around, uh, proposed amendments that are effective on July 1 with the new fiscal year. The, um, when we do that, we incorporate anything that was ratified from the past year since the last town meeting. And then we look at the salary ranges and propose adjustments. In some years, we've proposed uh, this, adjusting them all pretty much by the same amount. 
and other years to when um, we see that some may need more, we've, we've done other types of adjustments. And we talk about that in the presentations that we make to public hearing. And, and if there's a presentation at town meeting, we do that too, but there hasn't been for a number of years because it's been on the consent calendar. Um, so a few years ago, for example, we uh, moved several ranges more than, than others. So example, the line workers, we, could, we had uh, market information that was showing that line workers were falling behind in the market. And so instead of just moving them the two and a half percent like other scales were moving, we moved those ranges uh, more. I, I think, um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember the amount, but it might've been 5% or 7%, something like that. And we also made quite a few other types of adjustments a couple of years ago to some of the other types of plant, um, kind of unique positions and, um, and some of the division managers. But uh, we also sometimes just do an across the board. This year, given, um, oh, and I'm sorry. And those recommendations come from just, again, a wide variety. What are we finding in terms of recruitment? watching the, um, the salaries from of other towns, knowing what the budget is looking at, uh, knowing how much the, the cost of living index is changing, all of that goes into account, although there's not one exact formula. Um, and then, so this year, the, the uh, major factor here is the budget. So with the pandemic, there's, there's not a lot we can do here. Um, so this isn't a year where we've been looking at making a lot of adjustments. Um, the, the town manager and, and finance director have been working on figuring out what can we provide for compensation. We've certainly been trying to be aware of what's going on in other towns, although that's all over the place. Um, we talked about in past years too, that sometimes it's hard to get anyone a snapshot for any one year based on where union contracts are at, that sort of thing. Concord has less, uh, less uh, positions that are represented in collective bargaining agreements. We have more in our, our non-union scales. And um, so it's, we might be trying to compare water sewer rates uh, when there's a, other towns are still negotiating their water sewer contracts, for example. So there's just a lot of factors, moving parts, but we do our best to kind of look at it at that point in time. So, uh, and, and again, in this case, the town manager and, um, and finance director in evaluating the budget felt that the best that we could provide is a 2%. Um, we don't think that the scale should move more than that. Uh, because I think it would set employees' expectations uh, too high, and um, we'd be having people, you know, if we were recruiting for positions, would would be advertising rates that we wouldn't be able to fill based on the um, based on the available budget. So the recommendation here is to adjust all of the scales by two percent. Um, there are a few scales that are. Um, that would be below minimum wage, Massachusetts minimum wage, even with a 2%. So we'd further increase those up to the 1350 per hour. Um, there's a couple more uh, just housekeeping items as well. So um, effective with the July 1 schedule, we'd propose to take off a couple of titles that are no longer needed which is the public works and engineering director title and the chief information and telecommunications officer. Uh, we're not using those now and do not foresee using them in the future. And then um, that also means leaves no position in the TM4 salary grade. And that grade was really uh, created for a particular situation, which was when we combined the duties of chief information officer and tele communications officer together and that wasn't meant to be a, a long range plan um, significantly to have those forever together and at this point um, you know we, we don't we've filled the uh, those positions separately so um, we do not need the TM4 grade anymore so we would as a housekeeping item remove that for for July 1. All right Amy thank you for your presentation. Questions or comments from anybody?
All right, so. Hold on, uh, sorry, I had to get off mute. Uh, just a quick question, um, Amy. So I'm assuming that means we're moving the min and max of all ranges up 2%. Um, right. Does that affect any incumbents? And um, do you then have to move uh, those folks up? Okay, so the, um, the salary schedules and the base wage increase for employees is not automatically tied together. We many years ago um, separated those. So most, many, many communities have what we call step plans. And so there are set rates. So when you move, when you move the plan, all the steps move. So, so employees automatically get that same amount. Um, we many years ago in an effort to provide more flexibility and be prepared to address difficult financial circumstances um, removed those uh, that tie and so it is we, the way we have it set it up is that the ranges can change and then employees could stay exactly where they are if there's no if the town meeting doesn't approve a budget that would provide for two percent um, the scales could move two percent but maybe employees uh, increases are frozen, or maybe they're one percent. Um, the only time where it would be automatic is if somebody fell outside of the range. Let's say um, the new minimum, um, you know, suddenly was was higher than what they're making. But that's not that's not going to happen. We don't have anybody at that point. Right okay, now. That, that was my question. Let's do. We have anybody that? Okay, thanks. That that yeah. was a that's a good question, Jim. Thank you. Um, Amy, do you have any data that would indicate the percentage of the employees, non-union employees, who are in the upper, above 90% in the range? Above 90% in the range. Um, I'm trying to think if I have that right now. Or, or alternatively, what, where, where does the, uh, the employee population fall uh, across the board in relationship to percentiles? That's a very good question, Jim. I haven't looked at it this year yet. We usually do that going right before public hearing and have that going into the public hearing. And I haven't recalculated it for this year. Um, I'm trying to remember where we were at, I believe. Um, Remembering right, it was about on average about twenty five percent of the workforce was at max. That's that's my best recollection. I can certainly have that for the next meeting. All right. Well, that from my experience, it's interesting when you have a significant population in the upper percentiles um, of your salary range, and then how do you make necessary adjustments? Uh, if in fact somebody is at the top of the range, then I guess the mechanism is since we're increasing the range by 2%, then the range allows for, not that there's a requirement, but allows for that individual to get 2%, but no more than 2%. Exactly, that's exactly it. Um, and we certainly were at a point, um, I don't know, maybe five or so years ago where we had a lot of employees bumping up against the maximums. Um, but you know, we've also had a lot of, of change in retirements and, and just movement. Um, we did again make some adjustments to scales where we saw that we were you know, falling behind in, in market. And so um, you know, it, it's, it's shifted. And you know, I would say generally, um, you know, the workforce is changing too. And, and people don't look at public employment or any employment as something to stay at for, um, you know, the, for decades anymore. And so people are, are more likely to move faster than we used to, used to find. All right, thank you. Thank you, anyone else have any? Well, I, I, I actually think that we should probably try to encourage people to be, um, I don't know, to be public service, um, public, you know, public um, employee, um, to be employed by the public. I just think that sometimes we don't understand what it is that people like like in terms of being a public service employee. 
And I would say that we have not done the study. We have not understood the reasons. And I think that we should really do that in my humble opinion. All right, thank you, Ellen. Um, I mean, I think in any organization, whether it's private or public, you have to understand what the value proposition is to come to work for you. And so um, many of these values and the propositions are not necessarily gonna be terribly different. Yes, in specific instances, I'm sure they, they can be, but um, every organization, public or private, has to be comfortable in the recruiting process to have value propositions that can be, can be articulated and understood. Uh, otherwise, no job's ever gonna get filled. So I think experience has show, shows us, shows me, that um, the, uh, the, the human resources function within the town of Concord is knowledgeable and aware of this, and obviously is able to um, satisfactorily fill positions. I would just add to that, I think the town of Concord has a great human resource department. How do we enable them to really, um, I don't know, fill the positions that we need to be filled? I'm not sure that we really have understood that in my humble opinion. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Ellen. Any other comments or questions? So as I look at the, um, at the proposed motions for actions requested, uh, this is number four for those of you who have your, the, the, uh, the document in front of you, it looks like we need to move those uh, one, two, three, four, five items. Um, and it, uh, the personnel board needs to move those five items Can you, with approval. I don't know quite what, you, what the five items are. I'm sorry, maybe I'm missing them. Okay, well, I'm looking at the, it's really the second, it's the page after the agenda. And it says proposed motions for actions requested. It's the page after the agenda. Which I in for me it's page two. Four. The items in italics. And it says call to order, approval of minutes. I got it. I got it. Okay. So then number four, the first bullet has five sub elements. I understand. Thank you. So I am assuming, and obviously I'm open to open for correction that we have to move those, that first bullet, which encompasses those five sub elements into a motion presented by the personnel board, approved by the personnel board. So I'm gonna to need to have somebody move. I'll do it. I'm sorry, Bill, where is the article six motion? That's in the next, that's in the next bullet. Well, it's actually not, no, it's not here. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I think it's page 16. I got it. I'm with you. Thank you. So we're now on back. Jim, you've got, you're able to. Sure. Yep. Um, I'll make a motion to move to support the town manager in submitting warrant articles reflecting the following proposed changes to the classification and comp compensation plan. Uh, one, insert classification actions from past years, which increase all uh, ranges by 2%. Further increase uh, to $13.50 an hour, any minimum rate below that amount. Uh, remove the titles of public works and engineering director and chief information and telecommunications officer. Uh, and remove the TM4 salary grade. All right, also, um, whoop, do I do the last one? No, I think. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I would keep that separate. Okay. And uh, so I've we, uh, we have Jim has, has moved. Do I have a second? I have a second. Okay, Nancy has uh, has seconded mm -hmm. the, the motion, and let's go around to for uh, to approve or not approve. So Ellen. Yes. And Nancy. Yes. Jim. Yes. And Bill. Yes. All right. Um. It, you know, Amy, what I'm thinking of is that that next bullet might wait until we have our <coughs> discussion about the, uh, 
the Article 6 uh, or Article X. Maybe, yeah. I would that think. doesn't have to be done right now, I assume. Right. The next motion is after that discussion. So the yeah, the next okay. agenda topic was to talk about the bylaw amendment. The board had already voted to move forward with the bylaw amendment as um, the same as last year. That doesn't mean it can't be changed. It was a vote. Um, but you know, you you throughout the town meeting process could choose to make amendments to that as you get feedback. I think we've talked about that before, that you're moving forward with it. This is the last chance to, if, if you were going to make any amendment to amend it before it goes into the warrant as a warrant article. Um, once it's in the warrant, then it will do a, a presentation for public hearing. Um, and at the floor of town meeting, if at that point you, through all the feedback and the process, if there was anything that you wanted to amend in terms of the way that the article is presented you could do a motion at town meeting that says something like as printed in the warrant with the with the following changes um but ideally you've addressed any of that beforehand but you know again that's just part of the the getting the feedback along the way process so amy just so i understand like where are we in terms of being able to adjust the <laughs> you know, the, the issues in terms of the warrant article. Okay, it's so like, the- Just them now or it's like next meeting? I'm just wondering. This, so um, it's a, one, it's been voted on. In order to change that, there would need to be a motion at this meeting to, to amend it before it's submitted to the warrant. And what was planned, they believe, for right now was to talk about the input received at the town meeting preview um, and use that as the basis to consider whether there's anything that, that you want to um, amend. And then from now, there, we're discussing sorry, what? Input now or like later? Just wondering. I, I'm sorry, you patched up. Are we doing what now? I'm sorry. Are we discussing the input from various, um, you know, folks that had, had input in terms of the various meetings, you know, or later? And now, uh, it, now it's the next item on the agenda. Thank you, thank you. So, so what I would like to do is just to confirm and make sure that we're all on the same page at this point. And I think, even though I don't have. Uh, my page is numbered. I think page 16 has the Town of Concord personnel bylaw um, and the article. This is the article determined whether the town will vote to, to strike the text. Isn't, isn't that where we're at at this point in terms of what we as the personnel board have agreed to? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Ellen and Nancy and Jim, uh, I don't think I'm being very clear, but do you, do you understand my point is to try to make certain we all have a baseline where we are at at the moment? Yeah, I, I, no, I, we've oh, had no discussion yet. We've had no discussion yet. Totally. I, I don't quite see, I'm sorry. I don't see the, 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 um, yes, I don't see the, um, I got, I don't see the, PowerPoint, but I got what you're saying, and I appreciate that um, the essence. I, would you like me to just share my screen for a moment anyway, yes. so we can I see what's sure making we're all looking at yeah. this. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea, Amy. Okay, great, Amy, I, I just do that. think I'm quite see all the things that we're talking about. Thank all you right. so much. Problem. Okay, so this is in the packet. Um, these, where it says drafts, we had the three warrant articles that we are planning to submit yeah. and at the bottom here this personnel bylaw amendment that's the same text as what was in the warrant last year so to date the board had voted to proceed with this but this is the um, last opportunity before it goes to print for this year's warrant to just take a look at that so that's where we're just trying to get the basis okay. and I'd like to just just step back maybe 
uh, one half step. And at our last, you know, it's reflected in the minutes, but it was agreed that I would be able, or I, that you authorized, the personnel board authorized me to work to prepare the preview material. And that preview material uh, is contained in our packet. And it essentially had three different slides um, that were discussed, I discussed with at the preview meeting. Yeah. So that's where the, the, this came from. This came from um, my uh, discussions with Amy and with uh, the town manager in terms of ensuring that what I thought was the essence of the article X um, and that there was a way for me to try to explain what we were trying to do. And that's the current situation, the target and the proposal. That's why this particular slide I thought was important. Ellen? So I would say I totally think that what you've done, Bill, is amazing and solid. But I would add, and I'm sorry to like make this so personal, I just say, I don't think that we actually know, I mean, I'm sorry, Amy, well, you said at the town meeting um, preview, that towns with town meeting forms of government have a different structure of the personal system than Concord has. I don't think we know that. I think what I am, I, I'm sorry, I'm the person who like wanted to do the, you know, the, 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 when did the, the research project that said, what do people who have a strong town manager form of government have in terms of their overall town, town personnel form of government? I do not think we know that. And I would say humbly, I don't think we know that. And I would say sincerely that we should not say that to the town meeting because I think it's wrong in my humble opinion. I, and and uh, um, I, I understand your, your point, Ellen. I, you know, was it meant to say that there's no town that has anything like this? No, I, I was commenting on typically, and I was talking from my experience, not, not the boards. I certainly, um, you know, there's been, I think twice over the years that I've done some informal gathering on behalf of the board just to kind of explore what, whether other, other towns went through the town meeting process and what their personnel boards did. I remember the first time, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what year it was. It was a long time ago where I, you know, the feedback that I got informally was I, I we saw a number of town manager forms of government, or strong town manager form of government, sorry, and that they um, had advisory personnel boards. So that was one thing I saw back then. And then and then more recently, a couple of years ago, was what went to town meeting. But I'll, I think all I was trying to say is that the structure isn't necessarily. All I'm um, saying, Amy, I love you yeah. dearly, is that we cannot say that, <clears throat> period. That we do not know what the normal, I mean, the typical form of, of personal board administration or personal form of administration is in a town manager form of government. That's what I wanted to do when I advise, please, can we do a study in January? I just don't think we know that. And I think to state that is, all I'm saying is that that's dangerous. And I think that would be a really, I don't know, um, uh, 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 it's a very bad statement to make, all I'm saying. I, I think it's important, and I, I appreciate that, Ellen. I think it's important that we as a board really focus on what it is we're trying to accomplish. And from my vantage point, I, you know, I, in some ways I don't really care what other, other municipalities are doing. What I care about is the ability of our town manager to be able to make decisions that affect compensation and classification and um, in and benefit and personnel leave decisions. I don't really, it doesn't make any difference to me that 
that somebody else does or doesn't do that. I think that this, this what we're trying to accomplish is, is clearly supported by common sense, efficiency, and the ability to fill positions. And I'm just, I'm just focusing on classification and uh, compensation and personnel uh, leave and benefit decisions. That's all I'm focusing on. I got it. I, got it. I mean, I don't think anybody in the personnel board particularly likes to do class and comp stuff. But in my humble opinion, my dear, um, I don't know how to say this. I just think it's really wrong that we think that the personnel board, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just sure how I, exactly I know how to say this. No, the town of Concord does not think, I don't think that we should, um, I don't know, I'm gonna stop because I'm not sure I'm gonna be very articulate, but I do not think that what you're saying is really cognizant with the town of Concord's norms. I do believe that the class and comp, you know, stuff that Concord does, like, is not great. So how about if we do it for a year? Let's do this for, like, um, I don't know. I just think that we're, we're, I think we've lost our way, in my view. Ellen, are you, are you going back on what we had already agreed to? I, I'm trying to understand where you're where you're coming from. I thought we all had agreed that the- Yes, Jim, I have. I just do think that we have not, you, you, you are very accurate in your estimation. I just think that we have maybe not really understood what's best for the town employees. And, and yeah, I thank you for Jim for that observation. Mm -hmm. Nancy. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to say that, um, you know, uh, for as long as I've been on the board, the uh, comp and classification system has been um, difficult in the sense that um, we could never really, you could change things. You could change the money part, you could change the title, but it all had to go to town meeting. And it, <clears throat> so it seemed like it, that might be able to be accomplished a little bit quicker than waiting for, for a town meeting if possible. And it was something that I've, I truly feel that the town manager, Amy, they have a lot more knowledge about the budget. Um, also, I think it's very hard to, um, that they are two of our main things that we do. I, so I think that there's something that I feel that we don't, I personally don't feel that we need to do. My question is, um, what can we do? What are we going to be able to do on the personnel board that will make a difference in town and help um, Amy um, and Stephen and, and make us be able to accomplish something? That's my biggest concern. <clears throat> I do feel that um, I do feel there still needs to be a personal board. Um, I think it's important. But I also feel like between HIPAA and a lot of that stuff, it's very difficult for us to be um, part of conversations that involve certain employees under certain conditions. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a hard thing. I, I, if we give up those things, what do we have left? Um, anyways, but I do feel that the comp and classification should should go off to the town manager, yeah, and Amy. And I would say that, yay, Nancy, like class and comp is like a crazy thing for any um, personal board or personal um, citizen board to do. But I think oversight, governance, um, other aspects might be exactly what we should do. And so it comes time things that, you know, you're, we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, I do think that we don't have to do class and comp, but what might we do and what might we do that's in the best interest of the citizens of Concord? And that's maybe, I mean, that's, but, uh, well, just, that's my concern. And I think, but I think Bill's made it clear. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is, is the comp and class system, right? It's, we're, we, and I thought we've passed this out for three meetings now where there's, there's, 
decision number one is the role of the personnel board and has it outlived its usefulness? Is it antiquated? And I think we all agreed it is, you know, it's, a, it's really not a, a good use of our time to come and listen to salary ranges and job titles, um, that that really belongs with HR in order to run an efficient and effective HR system. And I think that that's what the Warren article is, is taking that out from the personnel board. And I think that that's... Tim, are there items of the personal, I don't know, ideas that maybe could be part of the personnel board? I mean, I got it. You know, class and comp is like brain dead. We all know that. It's stupid. Ellen, excuse me. I think this, is, this, isn't, this, isn't, this is an important piece, but, but we're getting away from the essence of what we're trying to accomplish. And the essence of what we're trying to accomplish is to remove, remove the classification compensation. Can you please stop? That's all we're trying to do, nothing else. And when we have an opportunity to please. then just later, just a minute, Ellen, please, I'm the chair. When we have an opportunity, when we've accomplished that objective, then we can sit and talk about, well, what is our role? Right. But we don't have to mingle the two together now. It's unnecessary. It doesn't, it doesn't add any value <laughs> to removing the compensation and classification system. Are you system. willing to do a study? No, we don't have no. to. No, okay. not yet. It's not yet. I think I'm, I'm okay, guys. I'll just I will just say this, and I'm just shut up. I think that we are not really clear about what the goal of what the role of the you know the of the personal board might be. In terms of stop, Bill. Please, governance, oversight. Um, I don't know. You know, um, other things. I mean, I think that we're a little bit. I know, I think we are understating what a role might be and maybe great, we're gonna like, I just think we should please think about the wider view. Cause I think our city, I think the citizens of Concord, Concord wants to be further than we are currently um, thinking. And I am asking you guys, please, I just don't think that it's gonna work well at town meeting, in my humble opinion. And so can I just right now, the role of the personnel board is to administer the personnel bylaw, which includes the class and complaint. That is the role. And that's and right now the proposal is to change that. And the citizen feedback that we have heard is questioning that piece. You know, so everybody on uh, the on the board, people that have been involved in involved in the discussions to date, have unanimously said this is not the right role for the personnel board. We shouldn't be doing class and comp. And yet, the feedback that you're getting right now from the people that have chosen to speak up, and that that does not mean that's the majority, but the people that are giving you feedback are asking you to to think about the class and comp component of it and where that authority should be. And I am concerned that, you know, if you, if that for the last few meetings, you haven't been able to talk about that piece because we go back to what the role might be in the future. And as, and Bill is trying to say, yes, there are citizens that, that are expressing some interest in there being a different role, but that might be project number two. Right now, you've got a warrant deadline and and, and you have made a proposal to, to ch change class and comp and have you, are you prepared to discuss that with the citizens and to address the feedback that you've gotten? And the feedback about a future rule is a little bit of a different thing than why are you recommending this about the class and comp? And you know, have you heard our concerns about doing that piece? That's just my two cents. <laughs> Class and comp is, I don't think anybody cares about it. I think most, in my humble opinion, I think most citizens kind of get that class and comp is like nothing that, you know, it should not be part of the personnel board. I think it's more governance. My opinion is about governance, about oversight. And I think you're not saying that. And I think that that's what we're not, 
it's the elephant in the room and okay, maybe not. Maybe you don't want to talk about it. I think that is really the elephant in the room. It's oversight of the personnel board process and um, the, super, the select board is supposed to be the, I don't know, I think it's oversight. And I, I'll just shut up. There were three people that spoke, I'm sorry, Nancy. Just say there were three people that spoke at the preview, which was meant to be a short, and they, but their comments were, were related to the class and comp. They were talking about oversight, I disagree. Ned Perry talked about oversight. Okay, I got you. But I just think that, I don't know, I will be quiet because I really think that oversight is the elephant in the room. And, um, okay, I'm gonna be the, I will be quiet. All right. Um, I would like to, <clears throat> to see us, uh, we made it, um, we had agreed upon that uh, number six article. And I would like to see that we reinforce that approval. And then we can deal with what will our role be in the future at the next meeting. But I think we need to move forward on this. We already did. I think we ought to get it squared away tonight and then put together what, what our role might be going forward. Um, I'll just note, I don't know if Bill, if you can see that we do have a, a, a couple guests on here, some citizens. Um, we have Mark Howell and Ned Perry on here. And just noting that for you in case there's a point where. You know. All right. No, thank you. Thank you, Amy. I mean, I think the, I think maybe it's now time to, um, to, to solicit any, any opinions uh, that the uh, public may have. And I would prefer as the chair to keep the discussion only on the compensation and classification system and nothing, I don't see the benefit now to get into the future of- Why? The Why, but I think Bill is wrong. Okay, I got you, but I think that, that restriction is wrong in my whole opinion. Okay, um, please. Let's, uh, can we ask if there's any um, comments from the public? I see one. Do have one. This is Mark Howell. Is, is it okay if I go, Bill? Yes, please. Okay. I actually have a couple of questions in terms of form. Um, I have on many occasions spoken to you and it agreed that class and comp is not productive. Um, and I would be perfectly fine with a personnel bylaw that replaced those responsibilities with other responsibilities. Um, I do notice a couple of things seem to be factually in error at this meeting. Um, I believe the, the, it's been represented that the article, the information that's on page 16 of your packet today represents the same thing that was presented in the warrant last year as article six. But last year's Article 6 actually had four elements to it, um, the last two of which are regarding the personnel board's terms and re regarding the personnel board um, being used at the request of the town manager to advise the town manager of his obligations under this bylaw. And I would suggest at the very least that his should be changed to something that's gender appropriate or gender neutral. But those those elements don't seem to be in what you're considering in today's meeting. Um, and I do think that it's important if you're going to represent that you're presenting the same article that was it was proposed last year, that it actually be the same article that was proposed last year. Um, this one is not that and you can have a discussion and I think a good one about productive use of, of that. I would also point out, um, and I do have another comment, but it's on a slightly different topic, um, but it is related to what I do think should be included in the personnel board's responsibilities as outlined in the bylaw. I'd be happy to make it now or later if you see that, if you think that's better. I, I would ask that you defer that until we are uh, finished with the comp and uh, classification discussion. Okay. Any other comments from the public about classification and compensation? 
I'll just comment that that must have been an administrative error on my part. Thank you, Mark, for raising that. I must have copied and pasted into from the wrong document when I got the, put the stuff together for the board. But the intention was to use exactly the same as what was presented for the warrant last year. You're welcome. So I guess, it's, Mark, do you want to, uh, um, again, I'm trying to focus our attention and time tonight just on the classification and compensation. Mm -hmm. And you've raised an excellent point about if the wording is not like it was before, then we go ahead and, and correct, uh, correct that for the warrant article. Um, do you, it sounded like you have another suggestion for the personnel board's responsibilities? Yeah, I, I would just note again, um, looking at the, at the, at the potential responsibilities for the personnel board. And it does go to this responsibility to advise the, the town manager that in the town manager's FY20 annual, um, annual um, evaluation, the select board noted that under personnel management on page four, that more than half of the select board members were unable to evaluate items included under this section, referring to recruitment, employee assignment, staff development, personnel policies, and visibility to collective bargaining negotiations. Uh, while these areas are under, and I'm quoting here, are generally under the responsibility of the town manager, the select board would benefit from a better understanding of the town manager's philosophy and approach to these personnel issues. It just occurs to me that if we have a personnel board, this is exactly the type of area where the personnel board as a delegate and the subject matter experts on behalf of the select board could be performing a useful function, which is not class and compensation. And it is a, actually a critical function and one where specific expertise is useful. And so the select board on the one hand is, is essentially saying, we don't have the information that we'd like to have about this personnel area. This evaluation was published on January 14th, which was before um, the last two meetings at which you guys discussed what the role of the personnel board should be and what the bylaw should contain. So I would again submit that you should consider what the select board is actually saying that it needs when you consider what the responsibilities of this personnel board should be under a reconstituted bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ned, uh, I mean, uh, Mark. I I see we've got Ned Perry at the top with his hand up. You're Ned, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, you you've uh, limited the discussion here, so I'm not going to um, go beyond just saying that the personnel board was reviewed as part of the town government study committee uh, back when I was on that town government study committee and found to be a viable part of our town government. The town meeting adopted uh, um, or uh, understands that report was done. Um, the personnel board is, has had a crucial position within the town government uh, for uh, since 1976, I think it is. And um, I think you're going to face significant opposition in town meeting if you don't reform your warrant article. And I would respectfully suggest you listen to Ellen and that you withhold the warrant article another year until you figure out what your future is. Because town meeting, I don't believe this year, and I won't go into it any further won't adopt article, your proposed warrant article. Thank you. I guess, um, you know, as, a, as the chair, I'm just, I have difficulty understanding, um, Ned, what, what the basis is of your, of your objection. Um, and I, you know, I, it seems to me that, that we're trying to make it the personnel comp and classification system really efficient and robust so that the town can benefit from something which is 
which is much more uh, meaningful. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I've only been in this town for 12 years. And so I don't necessarily have the depth of 1976. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really struggling with, with what your, what your, your position is on the basis for your position. I tried to reach out to you. I didn't connect with you. I connected with Nancy. I connected with Ellen. Um, I'm more than glad off the uh, uh, not being recorded here to explain uh, the difficulty you're going to have at town meeting this year, particularly this year. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Paul. Ellen, you're up. You're... So, yes, I totally get what Ned's saying, and I totally get what you're saying, Bill. I just think that um, I don't know. I think that the town has, I don't know. I think that we as a town have maybe not really understood what it means to be, have a personal board. I think that most of the folks think that per, in town thinks the personal board maybe is a, you know, a great asset for, you know, um, town employees. And I think that maybe we are not entirely understanding the um, maybe view of their uh, their view. So I would say that um, I would that I would say that we should consider a wider view than just the personal board. We can consider a wider view in terms of the personal the town employees. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, comments or suggestions? Well, you know, we're, we're at a point, it seems to me, of uh, having to decide whether or not the personnel board wants to submit the uh, bylaw amendment um, that contains actually the exact wording from last year does the, does the board personnel board want to submit this at this coming uh, town meeting? I mean, I, yeah. we have had discussion on, on this. We've decided before we wanted to do this. And now uh, we're examining external input, which is great. And that's the purpose of having uh, other outsiders. Um, and so um, I think um, what, I, what I'm feeling we need to do is we need mm -hmm. to reaffirm whether or not the personnel board wants to present the bylaw amendment. And I'm open for discussion as to trying to focus on this as our next item here for, for discussion and perhaps for reaffirmation. Right. Well, I'll just say I'd like to go forward with the classification comp. I'd like to go forward with that article that we have already submitted. submitted. Um, that being said, after that's squared away, um, we could move forward with what will be our role as the personnel board. So, I mean, I asked something, I don't even know if it's possible, but I would wonder if we could possibly, um, I don't know, Stephen, this is a question for you. Can we provide a view in which we, for one year, have a class and comp, you know, a change of the personnel bylaw one year, Stephen. And then during mm -hmm. that year, we do a class, we do a, a study of what other towns are doing in terms of strong manager of formal government. Because I don't think we know that. I mean, I mean, I know you said that in the um, uh, sadly you said that in our mm -hmm. town meeting, but you didn't. We don't know that. We do not know what is the normal, you know, what is the norm in terms of strong manager formal government. I would love to know that. So can we, Stephen, make this a one year trial? My question to you. Uh, I don't know that you can do bylaw changes on a one year trial basis. Um, but I, I so I, I would say that I don't see how you could do that. 
Okay. Um, but I do see that, you know, the personnel board could certainly um, evaluate the bylaw change if it's approved at town meeting and, yeah. you know, talk to Amy and I during the course of the ensuing year uh, and say, how's it going? Has this worked? Have you been able to make changes in a more efficient and effective way? And if the answer is yes, it's really opened up some things for us. We were able to pivot on this position or no, it has made virtually no difference or geez, you know, really having the personnel board as a backstop really was better than what we're doing now. Then a year from now, you can consider um, an article to put the bylaw back in. So that, that's um, all my question. I have no idea about the legal aspects of this. No, I, I know. I, I, you asked if, if, if it could be done on a one-year trial basis. And my answer is I don't believe so in terms of how the bylaw could be amended. Okay. But I, I was, but I was expanding on my answer about what could we do in the ensuing year, as a way to kind of get to what I think your point is. Right. So thank you. I do think that we, the issue is kind of like, how do we make? Yeah, I get your, your saying, Stephen. And so to me, it's like, can we make this work on a short-term basis? And I guess it's not viable. So I get that. So thank you. We've got Susan, yes. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Um, I, I just want to address what I think is the real elephant in the room. Um, I want to preface it by saying I served nine years on personnel board. As soon as I got on the board, uh, two of the members, both of whom are former select board and finance committee, said, I think we ought to talk about what our role is. Um, and it came up several times, but it never was um, addressed in the way it's being addressed now. Yeah. And it was Ellen who kind of took the bull by the horns. But what I think is misleading is that when this article came up last year, it was just after the new town manager came. And I think there may be a perception that the, the two things are connected. And I just wanted to say that in my experience on, on um, personnel board, we've always wondered what we were doing with class and comp because there was never a, 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 a time when we voted against what was recommended by the town manager and the um, HR director. So just by way of background, thank you. And, um, and this is something Ellen and I met with Chris Whalen on too. It, it was for, it was being discussed. <laughs> it's pretty much been discussed for for decades, but it was intensively discussed in the last year or two with Chris Whalen as well as a, something to move forward with. So it wasn't new with Stephen. That's true. No, I, I totally understand. I think that everyone has really said like, why the f are we doing these stupid things? in class and comp. I think no one in the personnel board <laughs> wants to do this, but I do think, and I, I would just ask Stephen and everyone in the, you know, the personnel board, what else can we do? I don't think that we don't want to do nothing. Um, I do think mm -hmm. that, you know, the stupid class and comp is like stupid, but can we do governance? Can we do, not governance in terms of like, okay, we're going to be the HR department and, you know, be Amy but something about oversight and governance. I do think that that is the conquered way. And so Stephen, I would just say, I think that's the conquered way. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I do think that's the conquered way. The, the, the difficulty, um, Ellen, that I have is, it's so clear to me that we have two different issues. One is the comp, classification, the other is, what's our future? And for me, I can easily separate the two. Because from my HR experience, I recognize the value associated with making decisions quickly and to work to provide value to the, to the community. So yeah. I just, I'm just struggling mightily to try to understand why we can't separate these two buckets. What are the, I'm sorry, Bill, I'm not understanding. What are the two areas? Well, you're talking about the future. What's our future? 
One. I think there's a, number two. Let me let me finish. Number two is the comp and and uh, and compensation and and classification system. They're just so different to me. For sure. I mean, sure. I think that class and comp is like a, a no brainer. We should not do that. But I think that the issues that I don't know. I hear that. Well, many people. So just let me finish, Bill. <laughs> things about non comp compensation and how do we get like gen x to um i don't know want to be employees of the town i mean bill we talked about sydney you talked about this you know gen x i just i don't know i will be quiet but i think there's a difference between the class and comp which is tactical and really brain dead and the future which is in my view bill is strategic i i share that it's just that cool. we are we have in front of us the ability to submit an article that gets rid of the compensation classification. Period. It but, has nothing about it. It's nothing about the future. That's a subsequent conversation. But it does. I mean, just so you know, many people in town, and we've had many people in this, you know, have said this. How do, are we sure that the future? For the personnel board, whatever it means, can please weigh in in the strategic, you know, I don't know, the strategy for <laughs> human resource management. I don't know. I just think that we've kind of messed it up. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to do the class and comp, but I think we've kind of thrown up the baby with the bathwater in terms of not really kind of getting maybe there are other issues that maybe we could consider. Yeah, as part of the, the H, you know, the whole human resource, I don't know, personnel board. And Alan, I think what Bill's saying is that's that's a separate discussion. If we haven't thrown anything out, we haven't, it, it's, a, it's a separate discussion. I got it. I just don't think that if we don't, I, I got it. Jim, I just think that if we don't consider it in this current environment at town meeting, it will be, uh, I don't know, I got it, Jim. I think it will be, um, it will be eliminated. What will be eliminated? But Sorry. The future of, about the strategy, about what might we do in terms of, you know. Um, I, 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 I get that. I mean, I get that. I, I, you know, I've also spent a number of years in in, in HR, and I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you're great. I don't really think having, you know, an outside uh, board sort of driving the the agenda and driving the uh, priorities for HR is a whole lot of value either. So I look forward to that conversation. But I don't, I don't, you know, at this point, that's really not the conversation we're trying to have. Okay, all I'm saying is I, I think we should be careful because I'm not sure that the town meeting conversation is going to be cool. It's going to be really, it might be complicated. That's all I'm saying. Still the right thing to do. Stephen, you had you had your hand up for just a little bit. Yeah, I'll defer to Nancy. She had hers up as well. Yeah, I, what I'd like to say is do we need a vote? Uh, do, we, do we need to re-vote to pass this Article 6 that we worked on that uh, that we are still willing to pass? I mean, that's what I want to know. That's what we're supposed to be talking about, and you're right on that, Bill. So our role in the future is totally at another meeting. I'd like to move forward in, yes, we're going to go forward with Article 6 as it is written with any corrections if Amy needs to do it. And then at another meeting, we'll talk about our future. But um, I also have another Zoom meeting with the Lions Board at, at seven. So I'd like to, I'd like to see us. We've been at this now for um, an hour and a half. So um, I know you had mentioned, Bill, that exactly that's what we're talking about. So I would just like to know if we can move forward on that. So I, I'll uh, uh, just if I get on the floor for two minutes. Uh, actually, Bill, you could, she asked you the question, not me. So, well, it it would be my. It's my belief that 
last meeting, we voted, the personnel board voted, essentially voted to have article six. That's article six from last year. Okay. okay. That, that's where I think we are at. Okay. So as a board, we have made that decision. If, however, the board now feels differently, then it seems to me we need another motion to rescind our last meeting's decision. So, so I would say that based on the comments in the town meeting, the, the you know, town meeting preview that I would rescind my vote. No, that, that it obviously is, you know, it's not like a, a deal breaker, but I would rescind my vote. Okay. Um, do we have any other of the personnel board members who are, who want to rescind their vote? No. No. Jim, no. Nancy, no. No. And Bill, no. All right. So I think mm -hmm. we're probably at a point, Stephen, for you to interject your, your thoughts. Well, yeah, and I think if you, I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's only if you are interested in changing what has already been approved for the warrant. So that's, I think that has been, that has been settled. I do the the town um, governance study report was mentioned, and I just um, I've been looking at that in the context of this discussion and others. And um, if I could just read an excerpt from that, if, if you don't mind, I know it's a little slightly off topic, but since it was introduced into the discussion, please. And this is from page eight. Um, the committees currently mentioned in the charter are the Finance Committee, Trustees of Town Donations, Board of Registrars, Board of Assessors, Personnel Board, the Planning Board, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Library Committee, and the Public Ceremonies and Celebrations Committee. <clears throat> After some debate and with no clear consensus for adding or deleting, we are not in a position to recommend a change to this list. And it's on the town's website. I, I, I searched for personnel and it only comes up a couple of other times. So I don't think I have this out of context, but it's possible I do. I, I was obviously Ned was on the committee, um, but that's the reference that I found to the personnel board. So I, I didn't see that as a clear indicator um, one way or the other, but again, I may be misreading that, but I would refer the board to that document it's on the town's website. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I, I appreciate the, the feedback we've gotten. You know, I, I, I do want, I know Susan dropped out, but you know, I want to reiterate this has this really has nothing to do with me. Um, you know, and Ellen, I'm sure you remember the first day we met in my office when you came in and said, This is something we're looking to do. And I said, Okay, I, you know, I'll support whatever the personnel board wants to do. Um, and it, it's still the case today. And so, um, you know, I, I feel badly, quite honestly, that's an idea that's been talked about for so long is, you know, somehow seemingly re a reflection on my tenure here. Uh, it's just, Nothing could really be further from the truth. So, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to offer that because I, like I said, I feel somewhat guilty that um, somehow, you know, the transition has been a factor in all this when it really predates my arrival by a, a wide margin. So um, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, it seems that it will be, an, it will be I'm sorry? Bill, public comment. Let me let me finish. Thank you. What I was going to say, and then I'll ask for public comment. Thank you so much. Um, hmm. I've, I've lost my uh, I lost my thought. So let me let me ask uh, for any public comment uh, at this particular juncture where we're at in our our conversation. Okay, I don't, I don't see any. So we are at the point where we are not rescinding the motion to present this as the article for the upcoming town meeting. And I remember what I was gonna say. It obviously will behoove me to ensure that I understand whatever objections and reservations that may be out in the community so that when I'm going to present this article, that I'm able to anticipate what these objections 
are and be able to deal with them accordingly. So that's, that's my responsibility as the chair of the personnel board to gather this information and to uh, incorporate that into whatever presentation I'm going to make. So, so Bill, Ellen, a comment. I think, I mean, it, um, I don't know how exactly to say this, but we, um, you, Amy, but we do not know what the actual, your comment at town meeting at the, I don't know, your comment that said, we, um, the, the folks with town, uh, strong town manager form of government are not like, I don't know, were, are not um, the comment, the, the, do not have the, the, the personnel board, personnel systems that we have. We don't know that because we have not done that study. And I am kind of like a little bit upset by that because I think that we strongly, this is what I was trying to say. I know it was like not well received, but in my um, humble, you know, study, proposal for study in January, we do not know what the various town manager form of governments have in terms of their, you know, form of, you know, the personnel board or various other personnel functions. And I think we should not ever say that. So I'm just humbly, I would just ask you not to say that. You know, I, Steve? I, so I need to push back on that, Ellen, because I think that that's, Amy has been an HR professional for in the municipality for many years. Hey, I've also been in this for many years. And I think that for you to say that because we're not aware of virtually every single scenario under which this may happen, um, doesn't mean that we should, you know, telling her what she should be saying publicly and what she shouldn't, I think is, you know, a little far. And I've never heard of a personnel board with a town manager form of government. That doesn't mean one doesn't exist, but I'm just not aware in talking to my colleagues um, that one exists. And so I think to say that we, because we can't disprove its existence, we can't say that generally we're not aware of these is, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be blunt. This is your view of Long Meadow. This is not necessarily the norm. I'm sorry. I just don't. I'm sorry. I'm going to push back. I don't think you actually know. One should actually make a study with the mass municipal, you know, um, group that actually could help us do that. And I think that you're, I don't know, I will be quiet, but I just think that I'm really upset about the idea that, you know, it seems to me that we're, I think we're railroading the issue about who knows and who doesn't. And Stephen, you don't know necessarily. You have let, for let sure. Me, you let, me, let me try to get bring us back to some kind of a neutral territory here. I, I totally because know that Stephen We are just going around in of, circles, Ellen. Stephen has been a great manager at Long Meadow. That doesn't mean that he is a great manager for Concord. Period. Hey, Ellen, if you have an axe to grind, do it somewhere else, please. This Come on. Let's yeah, get, let me. I want to try to get control of of the meeting because we are really digressing into areas and subject matter that's not appropriate for the personnel board. Where I think we are at at the moment, again, is that we have this these art this article six, which was Article six last year, whatever it'll be this year, that we are going to submit for the town meeting this year, period. Any discussion, if it comes up in the town meeting about the future of the personnel board, well, that's, that's a new discussion. And that's a new area of attention that the personnel board will need to pursue. And I am committed as the chair to make certain we pursue that. So I, I think we just need to, at this moment, agree that we're at a point where I think we can, um, where I think we're actually back to the agenda 
where it says here on Article 4, move to authorize the chair to work with the human resources director to prepare public presentation reflective of the personnel board's votes and discussions. I think that's where we're at in our agenda. And I think I, what I'd like to do is entertain a motion for- Ask, I mean, yeah. I would like to make a motion um, to authorize you to work with the personal board, uh, Amy, um, and to set going forward our next agenda. Okay, is there a second? A second. All right, is there a discussion? Yes. Any discussion on this? No. Not he hearing any, dis any intent for discussion. Uh, we'll have a vote. So Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Ellen? No. Okay. So this particular motion, and again, the motion was to authorize the chair to work with the human resources director <clears throat> to prepare a public hearing presentation. That's all this is about. Yeah. Reflective of personnel board's votes and discussions. Has nothing to do with the future of the personnel board. It has nothing to do with anything other than the comp and classification system, period. All right. Um, so we're nearing the end of our meeting. Uh, I think, Ellen, you have some comments. Uh, you've raised your hand. Do you want to? I, I do. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm like the like the weird person out. But I, I do think that we might consider um, another view, which is to, um, I, I, I know that maybe we can't do this, but would it be great if we probably had a one-year trial for the class and comp, you know, well, class and comp being, um, class and comp being offered to the person, the, the town, town manager. Then, if we did a study of what actually, what actually might be a, a good current state and future state for town manager form of govern, government. I think we don't know, in my view. I don't think we know what the form of government and the best practices are, the current practices or the best practices are. So I think that we're really a bit, you know, flying by the seat of our pants. So, you know, if other people think that doesn't matter, okay, but it, it matters a lot to me. Well, I, I don't think you can say it doesn't matter uh, to to us, I mean, it matters to me, and other people can speak for themselves. But yeah, it the point is, me. the point the so point much. is that we have an opportunity to move forward with the comp and benefit um, classification system. I'm not supportive of a one year trial. I just don't think that's that just doesn't make sense. Right. Right. Uh, the basis of this decision and the basis of changing this is to increase the efficiency and ability for the town of Concord to attract and retain the best possible talent. And the current, the current mechanism and process that goes through a very, very lengthy, is just, it's ridiculous. I mean, you, you would not have a private company be able to function if you had to go through all of the hoops and all of the steps that we have to in Concord. So, I, I would like to be able to, I've committed, Ellen, I've committed that once we get through this, we then have an opportunity to refocus. Now, again, I don't suggest at all that I, 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 I can let this stop now in terms of what I need to do to prepare to pr make the presentation and make certain I understand what are the potential pitfalls <laughs> and issues that are out there that are in a that met that some members, it appears, of the uh, town community citizens have. I'll have to I'll do that. I'll research. That. And can I just you know I'm sorry. I, I will just back up. I just think Bill, you're a great citizen and a wonderful HR director, but I don't think that you necessarily, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't think that your view of 
private sector is really what is the view of um, public sector. Anyway, I will just- and I, Can I just- I, Just be so I will just be quiet because I will just, I, I just think I've been completely overwhelmed, so sorry. And I just would point out that there's another town meeting next year. So if this were to pass, which there's a possibility that it won't, but if it were to pass and um, either it wasn't working after a year, as you talk about a year of uh, 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 trial, it, it, a new, an amendment can be proposed at the next town meeting. And if in that year, a new rule that has not existed yet for the personnel board is identified that the citizens of Concord are interested in, Again, there could be a Warren article next year to expand the personnel board's role and, and provide additional authority. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it's not that this has to be the end of that. There can still be work on the next year to decide whether there is a further amendment to provide a new role or the select board, because they are, you know, they're the appointing authority, they could also provide um, more direction to the personnel board through a charge, even if it's not in the in the bylaw, as long as it's not contrary to to any bylaw or charter, they could they could also ask the personnel board to evaluate. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Amy. All right. If there is no other further business to come before the personnel board tonight, uh, we will schedule a future meeting when it when it is appropriate um and other than that i guess i'll entertain a uh, a motion to adjourn all right i will make a motion to adjourn all right we have a motion a second second, second right. Matt. so in terms of all in favor uh, nancy aye and jim aye i think i think helen is gone uh, so, uh, and I will say I, which gives us a necessary uh, right. quorum in order to adjourn the meeting. Right. Thank you all. Thank um, you. Thank you, Bill. Nice discussion. And uh, we all have the same common goal, but we may right. have different avenues that we want to pursue right. in order to get there. But we all have the same objective. Right. We want to live you, in a Bill. community that has outstanding employees. We want to be able to work with each other. And yet we want to be able to be progressive and to be moving forward so that we can, every, every citizen can benefit. Okay. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.